Welcome to Simply Off Green Life. We're going to talk about our Victron system. We'll start off with the Multi Plus, or I guess you can call it Multi Plus One. We don't live off grid full time, but we like to go camping, vacations, trips, weekends, and not have to depend on campsites without no power or potable water. We like to boondock. We are set up completely independent of these needs, power or potable water for at least large period of time. The MultiPlus provides all that is needed for this project. We have added support such as the Servo GX and the Victron Connect app to monitor and to make changes as needed. We can make changes using our app on the iPhone and iPad. Unfortunately, some changes need to be done directly on the MultiPlus, at least at this time. I consider that as a negative. We set the settings using our Mac computer, booting off Windows OS, and making the changes online with VRM. There is an interface that's available to plug in directly, but I don't think it's worth the price or the time, as I suspect it won't be needed as more settings migrate to this app, hopefully. Okay, let's talk about the uh, MultiPlus. Oops, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here. There we go. It provides us a 120 amp battery charger, which means we can charge our 30 amp battery banks. The plan is to have four of these. The charger power can also be supplied or supplemented with solar panel. We also have a 2000 watt generator, 15 amps, and when offshore power is available. Our Cougar trailer is about 28 feet, total land 31 feet. And it comes with a 30 amp service and a converter. So our system purpose is to provide power to a 30 amp service and converter. We don't need a separate 12 volt DC supply, except for small items, security items, the Juca Nomad system, and the dishwashing station and shower tent, etc. And this is where the 3000 VA sine wave inverter comes in. It provides us. And it also has the capability of being a transfer switch, it allows us to use offshore power and or Honda generator. With the transfer switch, we have an option called power assist. Now we do try to minimize the use of propane, such as cooking, hot water tank and fridge. For now, we use propane for heating and fridge as needed. We're just beginning to upgrade our batteries. When using the 2000 watt Honda generator, the unit provides assistance to start up uh, high surge items like an air conditioner or, or the unit fan. My better half likes to use air fryers, coffee machines, induction stoves. Coffee machine, that's number one <laughs> for me. The unit provides assist when our show power is only 15 amp service, which is what our Honda generator provides. As for parallel connectivity and three phase connectable uh, options, we have no plans for it and we don't see ever a need for this system. At a future date on another project, it might be a different story. By that time, there may be different uh, options and equipment. And of course, our Victron MultiPlus is, is protected with uh, a breaker panel. We have 30 amp power usually coming in. Our incoming power is 50 amp breaker. And the outgoing power, I believe, is 40. 
and then we have a 30 amp breaker at the converter. The way our system is set up, every spring, every fall, I have repeated this many times in the past, I can slide this in, make the, the two connections, hook up the batteries, which will be mounted and fastened behind it. That's it. Okay, we'll go on next to the next pieces and give you details on that. Okay, our multi plus is connected to our Lynx distributor, which is this unit right here, with four odd wire, which should be adequate for a thousand amp uh, load. And we have a Lynx shunt, 1000 amp, right here, which provides information to uh, the percentage of the battery, more or less how much power you're consuming and, and, uh, and charging. We do have a solar panel, not a solar panel, but the Victron uh, uh, solar charger controller. Current at this time, uh, we're still trying to decide what to put on our roof. I don't care to put the rigid ones up there because of the weight, especially if you're going for 800 watts or something of that order. I do have a second uh, uh, solar charge as needed. For now, we're just using some flexible Renogy 100 watt panels, two of them for testing uh, to see how efficient it is. Uh, it has, this summer, it has certainly showed how to pick sites a little bit better. <laughs> um, in the past, we often camped in areas that were shaded. Uh, now we need areas that are not too shaded. So that's something to keep in mind. And so we plan ahead a bit more in that regards. We are currently investigating, looking at the CGS uh, panels um, because they're pretty, they're good for sh I don't know shadows, uh, shadowy sites, things of that sort. And I guess the main thing that really catches my attention is it's the uh, durability. Like their energy ones, I would never consider putting it on a roof. Yeah. I think if you check online, there be a lot of videos where people had all sorts of problems, a bit of fire, things of that sort. They're not durable enough. But the CGS ones, they seem to be very durable from some of the videos that I've seen. So it might work. The only thing I could see myself doing instead of directly uh, having it stick to the roof, I might put something that will allow some air space underneath. Again, that's uh, something in the works still. Now, this is an item that a lot of people don't use, is the Lynx Power, Power In. You know, I'll move it a little bit closer. I think it's a big mistake when people don't use it. With this one, it comes, of course, without no fuse, but I have added the modification, so each line is fused. In this particular case, I have 200 amp lines for, for each battery, like my uh, SFK, 300 amp, I have a 200 amp. Same with the SOK right now, it's 200. For now, it works. Uh, I don't draw that much that I have to worry. And because this is a best bar setup, and each of the cables is of equal length. I'm using two odd wire. I could use two, but it's being a little bit, uh, I don't know, <laughs> it being a little bit too cheap. But anyways, with two odd, I can then use a little bit more when I have to. But anyways, it's, it's more of a 
safety thing. I don't want to heat build up things of that sort. And over the summer, the way it's set up, because it's a bus bar, you cannot do this but any other way. Let's say both batteries are already fully charged, 100%, and when I'm using it, they both drop down to 90 odd percent, 80 odd percent, 70 odd percent. There's only a difference, maybe a 1% according to my Vitron Connect uh, monitor. Likewise with the charging. Let's say I'm at a 60% uh, discharge. It will charge evenly and it will hit absorption about the same time. We're talking about seconds of difference. Um, usually the S, uh, the SOK maximum charge is like 30, 30 amps or 40 amps at, at the most, I think. While the SOK will, will take 60 amps. It varies. So I'm quite impressed with uh, the balance. It's my hope that I could even improve it better by the ability for the batteries to talk directly to my Lynx shunt. And as mentioned in a previous video, Sunfun Kit is providing a hub and have an option to add the capability of directly wiring the batteries to my Turbo GX, which would then communicate with my Lynx shunt. This would probably give better control. And the plan is to have four of them. And then the, the SOK will be out of business and sent down the drain for some other work. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not too impressed with uh, SOK. I installed this switch at the bottom because I have an outside cable outlet going out and when not in use, I'd, just in case water or, or someone plays with the connectors or tries to shorter out, having that turned off when, when a unit is not in use, put away acts as a protection and allows me to disconnect the uh, solar array in an event I'm moving it around or who knows what could happen, right? This is uh, kind of a safety thing. And uh, it worked quite well on our last trip. I was quite pleased. If you were to look at some of the videos or pictures, which I have not yet posted here, but it, it may be a, a on my uh, intro uh, picture slide there for a few seconds, you will see the connector that I have outside by my door, trailer door, where, I, where the unit exists. Now, I don't have a need, as I mentioned, for DC power, but I have given it the options. I'll be able to hook up things. For example, I want a camera uh, plugged in for 12 volts. Uh, likewise, I have a USB in a 12 volt plug, just in case I have a need for it. It's there. I had the part, so why not? I basically use the same type of setup with the cable for uh, all my other uh, batteries. Uh, when, for example, using uh, some of the ice fishing equipment, uh, fish finders, active target, even uh, my diesel heater. It's compatible. <laughs> I don't have to play around with a whole bunch of different plugs. I have uh, installed this little white thing right here. I shall point to it. Here will be here. That's a Ruby. It gives me temperature, moisture, things of that, of that sort. So I could monitor that remotely. Um, the system's are also hidden with uh, various security devices for tracking things of that sort. 
so I know where everything is at any time. And I have these Ruby devices in several areas, so I cannot monitor remotely. In fact, all this whole system, if I'm connected to Wi-Fi, which I have in the Servo GX, I will be adding a cellular router to this unit. It will be mounted uh, inside the trailer. This then will give me Wi-Fi or cellular and internet, I should say, connection when I don't have Wi-Fi. And then with an outside antenna for the cellular router, when I'm in the fringe area, well, hopefully the outside antennas will provide that. As we use that system, we'll certainly find out which, which sites that we go to are in the fringe and which are not. In areas where we probably not able to get any type of signal, we usually don't camp in those areas. We like to have some sort of uh, communication who knows, an emergency can occur. Okay. I think that pretty well covers it. I'll just zoom out. At, at a later time, I'm, if there's a need or a request, I don't see that happening, but if they want more details as to how the connections were made, I can take all the covers off and uh, track all the cabling so that a person can then hook up. Actually, the, the hookup information is available online from way over there. I got a chart way up there. And Bertron, a uh, Victron uh, site, you can get that. And if you look at it carefully, I'm very close to, <laughs> to that setup. I think uh, the only thing that's missing, I don't have an internal display. I have the Multi Plus. I do have the Battery Protect, but I don't have a DC load to worry about because these are all fused, but I have it. And four batteries is what I, the plan is. However, in my particular case, I have, yeah, it has the link power in. There you go, and it is distributor. So there you go, very close. So if, if you access that site, you'll have my basic system set up. Okay, we shall move on to our next review.